to invite uh, Dan Russell from Genesee Health Systems, the CEO, to just welcome everyone and then we'll get started. I think if you just talk very loudly, I think we'll be okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Jim. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, Genesee Health System is very, very honored and happy to be able to sponsor uh, awards for this dinner. As Jim said, we have worked together for a long, long time, and Jim and I have worked together for probably longer than the 15 years that our organizations have. And I, it's kind of a cliche these days to say that we are in different times, and it's been a weird year and a weird last 18 months or whatever. Um, I think the, the good thing is, is that no matter what has happened, there are some steady things and there are some things that you can count on. Jesse Health Plan, I think it's one of those. The staff, the organization is here, is gonna be here, and whatever is gonna come, you know that there's going to be organizations and staff like Jim and the plan that are going to take care of whatever comes up. I think that is one thing that you know we can be thankful for. And uh, again, I'm very happy to be here, and I hope we all have a great night. Thank you, Dan. Well, I do think we should play the drinking game. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do that a little bit later. Um, so again, welcome to everyone. As you know, last year we weren't able to do this, uh, um, and I appreciate the patience of our award winners that we kind of told them a year ago in about February, and then uh, obviously uh, things got shut down and we weren't able to do this. And literally we've been thinking about how we can get this dinner and have it, and uh, we tried and tried and thought, and. And so we just said, you know what, we're going to do it. So we appreciate everyone who showed up, showed up tonight. And uh, so we're, we're going to try to do things as distant and socially distant as possible. So, uh, you know, the, there is some spreading out at most of the tables. And as I mentioned, uh, dinner is going to be a little bit different. So there's going to be, uh, if you've ever been to a Chamber of Commerce uh, luncheon, we were going to have two uh, lines, uh, two tables of food. There's going to be servers that are going to be dishing out your food. So you'll just let them know what you uh, would like, and then you'll bring that back to your table. And we just ask that uh, at 5.45, that you can still be eating, but I'm going to just start the presentation uh, and so that we can get out of here at a good time. And that's probably good news for a, a lot of people. So uh, less talking from me and uh, get us going. But we just wanted to um, kind of keep things rolling tonight. So it's going to be a little bit different than we normally have, but uh, I think we're going to make it. But before we eat, I would like to um, have Yvonne Lewis come up and uh, say a blessing uh, for not only our, our food that we're about to receive, but our evening uh, in our fellowship. So Yvonne, if you would like to do that. Yvonne's our Director of Outreach, and I don't even want to talk about all the titles you have uh, in the community, but uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, no, yeah, you we're, the, we're on a time frame you here. Got a time frame, yes. so we're going to stay on a time <laughs> yes. frame. I would like to say good evening, and thank you all for coming. And just for these next few moments, I'd like us all to think about having an attitude of gratitude. So much has happened. We've had so many challenges experiences, and yet we all are blessed to be here tonight. There are some who could not be here, but we're thankful even for those who are not here. So if you would just bow your head, and sometimes people say, you know, we've done a lot of mindfulness and meditation, so however, it's best for you to think forward. We think about what's happened in terms of the past, and we even know the challenges that we face in the present. But as we look forward with an attitude of gratitude, we're thankful. And so for these table comforts we have, we're so thankful. We are thankful for our partners who have supported this event tonight. And we're thankful for those of you who have come to fellowship with us. And now we ask that we would be grateful. And in our spirit of gratefulness, we think of those good things that are available for us. 
So we pray that our food as it merges with our body will give us strength and energy to continue the work that we've done. We pray for this fellowship that we even who have struggled through the pandemic are encouraged to keep doing what is necessary to make the difference every day in the lives of others. And as we fellowship together, we give thanks to God. We give thanks for each other. And we ask for strength to continue this journey. In the matchless and powerful name of he who loved us most, amen. amen. Thank you, Yvonne. All right, so I'm going to dismiss you to go ahead and, and eat so the hungriest people can get going first, and then uh, the others will catch up. So, yeah, please use both sides of the room. And I'll start talking again about 545, but please enjoy your food and, and your fellowship. So. Hey, Jim, touch the rails. He touched the rails. Did you get your feet? Oh yeah. Alright. He's touching the rails. <laughs> Don't tell him. <laughs> How's dinner going? Good? Good? Alright. Well good to hear. So I'm gonna get things started, but please still continue to eat, or if you need seconds or thirds or fourths or <laughs> more dessert, go ahead and help yourself. So uh uh, but I want to want us to get going, and uh, they said they would cut my mic off if I talk too much. So, um, <laughs> but again, I want to welcome everyone. Uh, it's our 20th anniversary of the Genesee Health Plan. Can we give that? Yeah, thank you. I think with how busy we've been and with the pandemic, and we just uh, we kind of lost sight of that. How. Uh, it's been 20 amazing years of, uh, of providing health care coverage and services to the uninsured here in Tennessee County. And uh, so we want to celebrate that tonight. And uh, and we couldn't have done it, again, with the, without the partners that we have in the room. And so uh, uh, there's that word partnership again that uh, I wanted to, uh, to mention. So we're going to do things a little bit differently for our awards recipients. So if you're up for an award or getting your, an award, um, I'm going to have you come up these stairs over here. And then I'm going to point uh, to what award you're getting. And if you grab that, so I don't have to hand it to you. And then you step over here and we have a photographer ready to take your uh, picture. And um, if you want to say a word or two, you can. Uh, but I think most people uh, aren't going to do that. So uh, <laughs> that's your choice. Um, and then, uh, so uh, the first, uh, and so yeah, and then we'll be wiping down the mics between, uh, so, and thank you, Mario, for doing that. So uh, we're going to try to make it as safe for everybody as, as we can. So. Um, and then at the end of the evening, if you have got an award, uh, the photographer is going to be stationed in the back. And so you can get a picture taken with the backdrop, uh, with your family, friends, your colleagues. Uh, um, and uh, please uh, feel free to do that at the uh, end of the uh, award show. I think that was all I had to go over on that. Uh, we're very appreciative of our sponsors. Uh, this is a... Uh, we didn't know uh, because of COVID what that sponsorship would look like, and it's just, it was just overwhelming. So thank you to all our sponsors. They are listed in the booklet here, and just for the sake of time, I don't want to read through all, but we want to thank everybody. If you're part of a sponsorship, uh, can you just raise your hand and uh, we can recognize that. Uh, thank you. So thank you to all our sponsors who were so generous. Thank you. I also want to uh, welcome uh, our Genesee Health Plan Board of Directors. We have a few tables uh, we're spread out of those uh, in, as well. So again, it's been a, a challenging year for the, the Genesee Health Plan, but I couldn't have done it without uh, the support and, and the expertise of our Board of Directors. So thank you uh, to our Genesee Health Plan Board of Directors. Can you just stop and wave and let us know uh, where you're at? So thank you to our Genesee Health Plan Board of Directors. We can have everybody spread out uh, uh, amongst us. And um, I think that's uh, what we uh, wanted to do. 
Our first uh, types of awards is our staff recognition. And uh, I was just talking uh, to Dan uh, at, while we were eating that uh, last year we had a number of staff receive awards or who were scheduled to receive awards. We didn't have the award ceremony and we had a, a private uh, celebration uh, uh, outside at, at Elms Park and, and went over those with our staff. So we, we have a few more though to give out um uh this evening and the first three are um more for years of service and so i first want to introduce uh and i think i just see you're still eating so uh yvonne lewis will you come up here please <laughs> yvonne is receiving she's been not with the health plan five years, but in her role as director of outreach. Yvonne was one of our original board members 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, when she was in transition, we snagged her as quickly as we could. And what a blessing you've been to the health plan. And it, it seems like it has been more than five years, but um, uh, we just thank you for all your service, your dedication. Uh, Yvonne does not punch a clock. She's uh, working from dawn to uh, past dusk. So appreciate all your efforts. There's your, oh, you don't have your man, naughty. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you want to just say a, a, a word or two. <laughs> That's going to be difficult. But I thank you, Jim. And I, I actually want to thank all the staff and the board of the health plan. As Jim mentioned, I was a community partner when the health plan was vision 20, it's, it was 21 years ago when the idea came forward. I had no clue about what you were talking about. But what I learned is about this community is that this community has a commitment to making sure that everyone in the community had access to quality health care. It's not an easy journey, but the village is an example of community members across this county saying, I'm willing to contribute some of what I have to make the lives of others better. So I'm thankful to have been a part of the outreach effort, and uh, I know they'll be happy if I retire, so we don't have so much that we do, but I don't see retirement yet. So uh, thank you, thank you so much, and God bless you all for all the work that you're doing to make the health plan, to support the health plan, to continue to do work that we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. I know you're not retiring, so that's, that's out of the question. So uh, but thank you for all your years of service. We have another uh, uh, part of our management team that has been with us for five years. It seems longer. Linda Gibson, will you step up, please? Uh, Linda Gibson has been our uh, director of operations. Uh, uh, for five years. I've known Linda for many, many years prior to that. And uh, she keeps us uh, together on this uh, COVID, so I better put my mask on, uh, or else I'm gonna get written up or in trouble somehow. But, uh, <laughs> Linda has just been such a blessing to us. Uh, uh, she came to us and uh, we talked about the you know position and, and uh, she she's another one who does not punch the clock. She's there, right? Uh, wait, the first one in the morning. She usually beats me, and then she's always there at the end of the day, uh, even after I leave. Because I'm hungry, I want to go home and eat. Uh, <laughs> but Linda is there uh, working, and so Linda, uh, you are such a blessing to the health plan. Linda, however, unfortunately, is retiring in January, so um, nope. it's really sad, nope. bad news for us. Uh, we're going to try to stop that as much as we can. Uh, but again, uh, we just wish her well, um, and but just thank you for your years of service. Woman, <laughs> and uh, if you see me always looking to see if I'm mask on, that's what I do all the time. But um, it has been a privilege working for Jim's Health Plan. Um, 
Jim is great to work for. The staff has been great. Um, it's been a, a real pleasure, and uh, I have enjoyed it immensely. One of our other staff um, recently retired, and she said that to end her career at a place like Jimson Health Plan was so, so rewarding. Because the work that we do, helping people have access to health coverage and other things that they need resources for, removing barriers to allow them to be able to have those services, is such a rewarding experience. And I thank Jim for giving me this opportunity because it was truly divine intervention as, as to how this came about, and it's been a great ride. Thank you. Thank you. And then, to be self-serving, uh, I reached a milestone this year of 15 years at the, the health plan. And, and normally I wouldn't recognize that, but you know what? That is an accomplishment. Uh, we've seen a lot uh, of growth at the health plan. When I first started, uh, and Linda Hammerford can attest to that, we maybe had nine, ten employees, and uh, you know, we have 48 employees, or 47, 48 employees uh, since that time. And uh, we've expanded uh, our coverage, our staff, we have a whole team. And so, yeah, we, we want to celebrate uh, those accomplishments. And I, I'm just so happy to be at the Health Pipe People. I am fortunate enough to speak. I'm going to take this off on this, sorry. You're retiring anyway. <laughs> I am fortunate to uh, speak all over the country, uh, get invited to do about the work that we do at the health plan, and the work that we, not only do at the health plan, but the work that we do in this community and how we partner together. And uh, the, the rest of the country is amazed about what we do here in Flint, how we can all work together, and, and, and again, I use that partnership word again, and how we work on all of this. and, and, and and it's, it's just such a privilege to be at the health plan. And, 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 and so, yes, I, I think I have a, a little bit of an award. I'll just leave that at the table. Well, actually, I was supposed to introduce Jim and give him his 15 year old award. Oh, <laughs> well, you can do that one now. Sort of took over. So, one of the things I would like to say, and I know the staff will wholeheartedly agree. He is such a great leader and an example for all of us that work at Genesee Health Plan. And the past year and a half, going through COVID, the leadership that he provided that allowed all of our staff to be able to still maintain their jobs. And you know, many organizations were not able to do that. And he has um, always been so dedicated to everyone in our organization. And I'd like our staff to stand and give them Next, we're going to, uh, I'd like to have Shannon Cizak come up, please. Uh, this was another award that we were going to give out last year. Uh, many of you know Shannon. Uh, uh, she is out everywhere, or was out everywhere prior to COVID as our communications coordinator. And whether it was a chamber meeting or a uh, rotary meeting or a, uh, a, she was she was always out there. And uh, Shannon also is in charge of our uh, social media and our uh, newsletter, uh, our design work of uh, our pamphlets and flyers. Uh, she's been amazing uh, to work with, uh, and uh, we wanted to give her an award. Again, last year, she worked very hard uh, the prior year on the, on the millage that was renewed in 2018. Well, but what I like, and I like a lot about Shannon, is uh, one of the things that when she's out in an event with all of you, uh, and you have someone to refer to her to get help, uh, she always takes that on to make sure that that person gets help, uh, gets them to the right person at our organization, the right staff person. And that follow through is, is so key to our success. And so Shannon, we want to give you the Community Ambassador Award uh, for all that you've done so far and all that you will do for the Genesee Health Plan.
Janet orders all of our awards, so we had to actually order her award and <laughs> sneak it in there and uh, wanted to surprise her so she wouldn't have to order her own award. So I think we did that. Yeah, now I was uh, curious as to why Jana asked me for the file for this. <laughs> um, I am very surprised, shocked. Um, I am so grateful to work for such a wonderful organization. I've been with the health plan for seven years now. It feels just like yesterday when I got hired and began working underneath Linda Hammaker and Jim together and the things that I've learned over the years. I learned something new every day. I actually was just talking to Dr. Fry about this. Um, if I'm not learning something new every day, then I'm doing something wrong. Um, and I'm just so grateful for the wonderful family that I worked with, for the work that I do and that we do together, the impact that we make in the community and uh, the connections that we make with organizations because teamwork really does make the dream work and I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have another award that um, I want to get caught up on as well. And um, it's so Kay Dork could come up, please. And she's going to kill me for this. <laughs> Kay was our longtime uh, um, board of chair for the Genesee Health Plan, and she also was the chair of the Board of Health, and, and she's on the Monday Township uh, uh, Committee, uh, the, the Township uh, Trustees, and she does so much in our community, and Kay was a great leader for the Genesee Health Plan as our board chair for, for many, many years, and uh, it, it's funny, because we used to see each other all the time. Literally, Kay was always out in the community, and I, you know, I was out in the community to dinners or uh, functions, and I would run into her, and it made it easy for us to communicate uh, about the organization, because I always would see her. And now I haven't seen you in a year and a half, but I, I was so happy to have Kay. But we, uh, on behalf of the Genesee Health Plan Board of Directors, we just wanted to give you a, just a small token of our appreciation. So we had a gavel made uh, for you. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's been about a year and a half since you chaired one of our meetings, but uh, you're always welcome. But thank you for all the work that you've done for the Genesee Health Plan. <laughs> Wow, talk about unexpected. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you so very much, and how wonderful to be back among friends. And I want you to know, I think the world of the Genesee Health Plan, I always will, and I'm cheering from the sidelines. <laughs> so, you know, we need to keep this going because this is the most amazing thing for the people of Genesee County. And wonderful things have happened in the last 20 years and more wonderful things will happen in the years ahead. Thank you so very much, every Thank one of you. you. Yeah, I know. You'll, you'll give it good use. <laughs> If you've been to uh, some of our awards dinner, uh, one of the, the, the highlights of these for me is uh, is hearing from our young people uh, about healthcare. We, uh, we uh, in partnership with Savita Credit Union, uh, have had an essay contest. Uh, and it not only, it has also, it's been for elementary, middle school, and high school students uh, to really talk about uh, their health heritage and to talk with their family members about their family health history. Uh, and we also have uh, sponsored for the last few years, thanks to Savita, a essay contest for uh, high school seniors who are going into the uh, healthcare uh, profession uh, and are gonna go to school for that. And uh, this year was no different. We had a, a number, uh, we had a, a contest and we had the most amazing entries uh, and it keeps growing and growing. So I would like to invite uh, Jen Chu, the Director of Marketing uh, at uh, Savita Credit Union and Julie Forbush, the Business Development Representative for Savita Credit Union and have them come up and present uh, our two scholarship uh, winners uh, their award. So uh, let's have a hand uh, for Jen.
Um, this is uh, Sovita's second year as a sponsor of the Genesee Health Plan Health Heritage Essay Contest and Health um, Career Scholarship Contest. We are extremely proud to be part of a program that furthers the knowledge young people have about their health, how it relates to their own lives, and how that knowledge is paving the way to pursue a career in healthcare. At Sovita, we serve those employees in the fields of education and healthcare, their families, and their communities. We are committed to supporting the work our members do by supporting the causes and organizations that are important to them. We know that our members are changing futures and we're thrilled to return the favor. The partnership with Genesee Health Plan has been an excellent opportunity to support educational program that relates to healthcare. Uh, we want to congratulate Anne Marie and Emily. We are so proud to be part of this presentation as you take the next steps in your educational journey towards a career in healthcare. We wish you success on your future endeavors as you head to college or as we talked have already started. Um, and we look forward to having you as part of the healthcare community. And I have a couple of thank yous tonight. Um, we want to thank all the educators who work tirelessly each school year to provide opportunities for our students. We want to thank healthcare workers who are providing leadership and guidance to our community while providing exceptional care. And we want to thank Genesee Health Plan for allowing us again to partner with them for this program. Your team is incredibly passionate about this program and about serving the community and we are so grateful. So at this time, Julie and I will introduce and then call up each scholarship winner individually. When we call you, please use the microphone on the left side of the stage and make sure you your word to the team the podium. So without further ado, I have the privilege of introducing our first scholarship winner, Anne-Marie Itenga. I apologize if I didn't say your last name correctly. graduated uh, this year from Genesee Early College and is heading to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor for a dual degree in neuroscience and voice performance. In her essay, she discussed the diseases and conditions present in her own family. It is important to know this information as conditions caught earlier may be more treatable. As a neuroscientist, Anne-Marie wants to be invested in patient welfare. Please join me in giving Anne Marie a warm welcome as she makes her way to the stage and shares an excerpt from her essay. Thank you. My older sister has sickle cell disease, which causes her red blood cells to sometimes form a sickle. Normally, your red blood cells are shaped like flexible round discs. In my sister's case, her red blood cells are bent or sickled. This is a problem because your red blood cells help transport oxygen to vital organs. Because sickled red blood cells aren't that flexible, they have a harder time traveling through the arteries. Sometimes they even get stuck. When this happens, oxygen can't travel to where it is needed and can result in a pain crisis. I remember my sister suffering from pain crises a lot. It was so hard to see my sister go through so much pain and trips to the emergency room. The numerous pain crises resulted in my sister's stroke at the very young age of 17. Now, as a prospective neurologist, I have so many questions. How can sickle cell, a disease affecting the circulatory system, result in a stroke, a, a condition affecting the nervous system? I took the initiative to research different types of strokes. In general, it's common for people with sickle cell to, disease to have ischemic strokes. Ischemic strokes occur when a blood clot dislodges and gets stuck in an artery preventing blood from traveling any further. Strokes can have many different effects depending on where in the brain they take place. In my sister's case, her stroke took place in the occipital lobe of the brain. This lobe controls vision, and as a re result, she is now peripherally blind. One good thing that came out of her stroke was monthly exchange transfusions. Every month, she gets some of her blood taken out and healthy non-sickle cell blood infused into her bloodstream. As a result, her pain crises are less severe. The last family condition I would like to explore is autism. I have a younger brother who has nonverbal stage three autism and global de developmental delay. And ever since his diagnosis, I've been trying to understand his condition better. 
The most heartbreaking thing I've learned is that it is hard to treat severely autistic kids over the age of six. That's why I want to research how autism functions in a variety of stages and how to treat each individual with autism. Since I'm entering college as a neuroscience and vocal performance double major, I plan on incorporating music into my research. It's so fascinating. The brain is the most important structure in your body, and if you mess up one tiny neuron, you could drastically change your condition. The voice is so similar. One wrong technique or one wrong note, and you can lose your voice forever. In both situations, you can feel like you lose a piece of your identity. But what if the two were interconnected? How is it that a former ballerina with dementia can remember a full variation from Swan Lake, and a former pianist in a similar situation can still perform one of Chopin's most difficult works? I hope to investigate how neural regeneration works and also venture into independent research investigating how the arts can stimulate new brain growth in people with dementia, Alzheimer's, and autism. Aside from the impact I want to make as a neurologist, as a healthcare professional in general, I plan to improve patients' quality of care. Following my siblings to the hospital has made me acutely aware of some health disparities in the healthcare system. Whether it is poor understanding by health professionals of how serious my sister's pain can be, or lack of services for children who are on the severe end of, of autism spectrum, my family health heritage clearly has had an impact on what kind of doctor I want to become. Thank you so much. graduated from Davidson High School this year and finished with three associate's degrees in sciences, arts, and general studies via the early college program. She will attend Wayne State University this fall and major in psychology with plans to attend medical school for psychiatry. Her essay focused on mental health and eliminating the stigma around it. Welcome, Emily. Congratulations. My career path has recently changed due to a life event. I had spent most of my life planning on being a doctor. However, during the pandemic, I've come to terms with my lifelong anxiety. I used to have at least two panic attacks every week. When I would get this feeling of not being able to breathe, coupled with shaking and my heart racing, it was debilitating. For anyone who's not familiar with the condition, whatever you're doing stops when you have a panic attack. I had felt like this for so long that I thought that everyone else did and that it was normal. And as I got older, I realized that panic attacks and constant worrying isn't something that everyone has to face like I did. Eventually, it got too much. It got to be too much for me, and I was struggling with work and school. So I decided to seek help. Um, this was a tough decision for me since I felt like I was admitting defeat or that something was wrong with me for having these problems. Despite that, I knew that I had to face my problem, so I started going to therapy and learning how to cope with my anxiety. They educated me with many tools to decrease and manage my anxiety. This, coupled with medication, now empowers me to control the condition much better, and I'm able to function and do all the things that I want to do. Anxiety is a battle that I fight every day, but with these new tools, I'm better prepared to manage and fight this battle. The most important thing I learned from my struggle with anxiety is that it's okay to ask for help when you need it. Before this point in my life, I didn't think that I had ever asked for help because I'm so strong-willed and independent. But now I know that asking for help from others isn't admitting defeat, but rather a way of bettering yourself. After the life-changing assistance I received from my psychiatrist, I decided that that's what I want to do with my life. I want to make a difference and assist others in the same way that I was helped. Mental health is a problem for so many people, and it still has a stigma around it. When I went to my parents about my anxiety, I found out for the first time that my father is also medicated and struggles with anxiety just like me. He told me that it has been a battle all his life and that all of his siblings and my grandmother struggle with the same thing. It would seem that there's such an unfound shame around mental health that even those closest to me felt that they needed to keep their suffering from me. I learned this uh, learning this just pushed me more towards the conclusion that psychiatry is what I need to do with my life. The coronavirus solidified this for me even more. During the pandemic, people with mental health problems, myself and my family included, felt their mental health problems become exacerbated. 
Therefore, the field of psychiatry was impacted heavily by the coronavirus. People needed help now more than ever, yet everything was closed down and inaccessible. So professionals in the mental health field had to adapt and come up with innovative ideas. My in-person meetings with my therapist and psychologists became phone calls and Zoom meetings. This was true for so many people, and eventually when restricted, restrictions were lifted, meetings resumed in person, but with masks and other safety precautions such as social distancing. Psychiatrists had to adapt to reading people over the phone and assessing their well-being and progress while they were not in the room. This surely made their job much more difficult, but they persevered and continued to help those in need during the pandemic when they needed it the most. It is times like these that foster unity and will allow us to look back and know that working together to overcome such situations can have an impact on future generations to come. Thank you. Public speaking situation <laughs> is so great. So, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, Jen. Thank you. And thank you, Julie. Wow, that was, uh, they wrote so well. I need to start using them for my, uh, my speeches, that's for sure. So, thank you to both. Uh, we're so very proud of you. And, and again, thank you to Savita for, uh, for sponsoring those scholarships that, that help with that college tuition. And it is, Parents, uh, a lot of you are that uh, you know how expensive college can be. So every do uh, every dollar helps with that. So I would like to move on. Um, we have another uh, staff award for Genesee Health Plan, and in August of 2019, I, I kind of sh shared with you a lot of the the good of the health plan and a lot of the uh, wonderful things that uh, have occurred at the health plan and and uh, the history of the health plan. Well, uh, we had something occur in August of 2019 that really impacted us. We had a staff uh, person, Carolyn Joseph, one of our longtime staff person, die suddenly uh, um, in, in August of 2019. And uh, I can't tell you how devastating that was to our organization, to our staff, uh, and how impactful she was. Uh, to all of us. Uh, Carolyn would be the first to volunteer. She was a, a nurse and, and an educator. She loved to go out in the community and educate uh, the uh, uh, people that we helped uh, on their diabetes. She would be glad to take their blood pressure and their uh, you know temperatures and she would do all those clinics uh, faithfully. She was a, a CPR instructor, and I remember her teaching all of us uh, CPR at one time. And uh, I, I tell you, when she see, would see me sometimes, and uh, I must have looked like I was stressed out, or uh, my blood pressure was high, she'd say, Jim, let's go into my office. And uh, she would take my blood pressure, and she would try to calm me down. And she, she had a, a heart uh, for me, heart for the organization and the heart for the people that she took care of. So I'd like to just show a, a very uh, quick uh, um, tribute video to, uh, about Carolyn and then talk afterwards a little bit about the award that we have created. <laughs> Carolyn was Karen. Class act. Um, <laughs> she was such a, a lady of style and grace, and uh, but so kind and caring. Will give you know the shirt off her back. Just one word: <laughs> compassionate, caring, loving, giving. I can describe Carolyn in one word. It would probably be sacrificial. Her life was a story that I could look to as an example to follow. Um, she was always giving of herself to help other people. You know, anything that she could give to help, whether it was some clothes that she didn't need, she'd give to people, or um, a ride, or it was just so many things that she did. Her life was really a beautiful story, and more definitely. Well, I think Carolyn's passion 
was around really helping people and seeing the outcomes that came from doing that. It, you know, she wanted to help them, but she also wanted to see, you know, the end result that that their life style was changing, that they were taking care of themselves, that she was really helping them in the long term to have a to have a healthy life and she was so compassionate about it not judging people not ever being critical of uh, of the ways that they uh, conducted themselves but always just helpful and guiding them i don't ever remember her not coming here being positive and upbeat always she was grateful for the things that she had in her life. Loved her family, and just a beautiful spirit. I appreciate knowing her and, and everything she did for me and the health plan and the community. We thought that by having this award, we would continue the legacy that Carolyn left here at Tennessee Health Plan, and it would be a reflection of the impact that she had on so many people throughout the community and all of the employees here at Tennessee Health Plan. We all loved Carolyn, and this award helps us to recognize what a beautiful spirit she was, and we'll never forget it. We miss Carolyn and we miss her caring heart uh, and um, we, we we want all our employees to strive to be like her where uh, she she took herself uh, out of being in the forefront and really had this servant type of mentality to help people and and that's what i want all of our staff to try to uh, strive for and and so we thought that creating this award would be a great honor in her name and to remember the work that she did, but also to have uh, that impression on our staff. But that's what we want day after day and hour after hour when they're here as a staff person is to be dedicated to caring for not only our members, but other people in the community. Carolyn, <laughs> even today, 
never got her wish of having a granddaughter. <laughs> but there's hope. The two kids are still thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn was born in Flint, and she attended Mount Morris schools. When she graduated from high school, she became an employee of Genesee County Friend of the Court. In 1971, when I was discharged from the Army, I also became employed at the Genesee County Friend of the Court, and that's where I met Carolyn. She was attending uh, some night classes towards her nursing degree. She told me she always wanted to be a teacher or a nurse because she wanted to be able to help people. After we were married, Carolyn was able to go back to school on a full-time basis, and she completed her RN degree, her registered nurse degree. And it was only after we were married that I realized what a unique she was always happy to help people she was always very empathetic she had always wanted to be a teacher or a nurse but Carolyn's biggest quality was she was always positive it didn't matter the situation um, she always looked on the bright side. I tried many times to get Carolyn to retire. <laughs> <laughs> and she told me that she really liked working, especially with the Genesee Health Plan, and that um, she thought she made a difference. And many times when she'd come in after work, I'd ask her how her day went, and she would explain to me about a client and what situation they had and how she was able to resolve it. And she got a great amount of satisfaction. So she enjoyed her coworkers and felt proud to be part of this organization that provides services to people who need assistance within this community. You should be proud that you're able to make a significant difference in people's health and therefore their lives. I want to thank you on behalf of Carolyn for this award. We're going to give this to one of our employees in, in, in Carolyn's honor. And so if you could just stay here for a second. Teresa Dalo, will you please come up? Mm. here as long as Carolyn was and um, as we were thinking about creating this award we really thought about who, who really shows uh, Carolyn's spirit or caring and uh, Teresa was the first one that uh, we thought of uh, uh, if, if you've ever seen Teresa in action she really cares about the clients that she helps dearly uh, there were many times that she'd come to my office and say, Jim, I know we don't cover this, but <laughs> if we cover this for this person, they really need our help. And uh, she would convince me of that. So uh, she just has a wonderful spirit, wonderful calm demeanor. And um, again, she's one, and we're talking a lot about retirement and, and cutting hours. and. And she has had an opportunity to, to not work, and she just she, she continues to work for us as a health navigator and just demonstrates Carolyn's spirit and the caring uh, that she has, not only for uh, the people that we serve, but also the rest of the staff. So I am very honored to award the first uh, award of the uh, Carolyn Joseph uh, Caring Heart Award to Teresa Dable. Teresa,
my great co-worker and a friend that I really dearly miss. If you knew Carolyn, you've been touched by her. And um, just pray that my life can be a legacy like hers. I can strive for that as we all can. And um, I really miss her constant, consistent, caring, um, love to me, support. She was always there. We worked together for many, many, many years. <laughs> so I miss her. Thank you. That was We're going to use that partnership award, uh, partnership uh, word again, uh, a number of times here. Because we're going to honor uh, some organizations that we've had partnership with, and we we call it our community partnership award. And um, I would like to introduce a, a great partner of the health plan. Uh, Health Alliance plan, and uh, I'd like to have Omar Sims come up. Uh, I think it's James Brown who was the hardest working man in show business. Well, Omar Sims is the hardest working man in Flint and in this community. So I would love to welcome Omar to say a few words about community partnership. Community partnership. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not mistaken. We are in a Hall of Fame celebration. Am I correct? So if you were at a game, what would you be doing? You'd be making some noise, right? So I want you to give yourself a round of applause. And then I want you to also give the Genesee Health Plan a round of applause. And we know individuals who supported Genesee County Health Plan over the years, give them a round of applause. Acknowledge one of our dear friends who's no longer here, but she's here in spirit. Give her family a round of applause. That's true partnership. Health Alliance Plan, I'd like to say, work with GHP has been honorable and it's been an awesome partnership. And the individual that's going to receive the award tonight. The true statement of private and public collaboration come together. In Genesee County, think about it. In Genesee County, to deal with the health issues, public and private collaboration. And the first one, one of knowledge, and I've been part of their family since 1982. Mm -hmm. I was a babe then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But when you drive in Flint, you see transportation. Don't raise your hand on this one. But how many of you know somebody who don't have a car? How many of you know somebody who needs to get to a doctor's office? How many of you know somebody who had to go down to Auburn Hills or somewhere else for transportation? We have a nationally known program here, and they're being recognized today for helping us with our health care. And it's another than the MTA, our friends, Ed and Stephanie. So. Now, you find the way of it's just right down the street. You see the van. You see the book, the Ride to Wellness program. They're all over the community. So, and Stephanie, come on up. <laughs> I had something else written up, but I, I couldn't stop what Omar just did. So, uh, MTA has been a wonderful partner. Uh, you know, again, what, what I like about MTA is that they listen. They're, if, if you do work in healthcare, and when you talk to people in the community, the, one of the biggest needs in our community is how do people get to their, uh, to their uh, appointments? And our providers have, you know, in the past have had a lot of no-shows that come because it's hard. It's hard for people to, to take public transportation to get to uh, um, appointments. It's hard to bring their family all together and, and get everybody bundled up and get them to their appointments. And so, you know, MTA and, and Stephanie and that whole group, Harmony, have really come together and they've created some unique programs. Rides to Wellness is one program where they'll pick you up at your door, take you not only to your doctor's appointments, but to the pharmacy, to the grocery store, whatever that person uh, might need. What a unique program that's not only uh, here in our community, but is recognized uh, nationally. Uh, they, they've been a great partner. We do a lot of work with the, the immigrant population of our community. 
and uh, they work hand in hand on giving uh, that uh, that group rides. Uh, and what they also they also did work with us on what they called a. Uh, uh, an ambassador program where uh, they would train uh, people that were language or culture was a barrier. They would train them how to use the bus. Because just think if you were new to our country trying to figure out public transportation, you'd probably ride the bus around, around, around and didn't wouldn't know where to get off or, or whatever. They're staff and they train people for free to ride public transportation until they're comfortable being able to do that on their own. So I, I am more than honored and thank you to uh, uh, Omar for that introduction of a great community partner in uh, MTA. So Ed, would you mind saying a few words? Thank you, Ben. Thank you, uh, thank you Jim. It's certainly an honor to be here tonight. It's an honor to see Omar. We've been passing each other for two days now. <laughs> I had eight events yesterday, and I know they haven't many, and here we are tonight. So he's been a, a great individual to work with over the years. In 2015, we met with individuals in the community, organizations, to talk about health care and talk about transportation. It was obvious to us in 2015 that there's people that need transportation. They need it the same day. They don't know the night before. They get up in the morning, they need to go to the doctor, and they need to find a way. Often, they'll make an appointment, and then they'll try to find someone to take them. In our country today, up to 70% of the people that make an appointment to go to the doctor are no-shows or cancellations. That's not true in Genesee County. Jim talked about a program that we developed in 2016, and we partnered with agencies, one of which is Genesee Health Plan, working with Shannon and Jim to talk about how could we partner to help people in the community. One of the first efforts was to put some Spanish speaking signage downtown that helped those that, that needed that type of assistance. And then we partnered to make sure that people were able to access transportation to get to their medical appointments. Our rights to wellness program, and be very proud of this, in Genesee County, we are the model for the country. We're number one in the country. I say that with great pride because the reality is we receive so many awards. We've been all over this country speaking. And the fact is, it's really about helping the people in this community. I'd like to take just a moment to recognize, you know, I'm the visionary, or at least they call me the visionary, but it takes people to make these things work. One young lady that's here tonight, that runs the show, she runs it all, that's Tracy Davis. Tracy, if you stand up, this lady's phenomenal. Oh. Tracy's worked since 2016 on this program, and uh, just give you a real quick synopsis of what happened is, in 2016, the Department of Health and Human Services said to us, you're providing service for us, but how about same day? And can you do that? And without talking to staff, I said, sure, we can do that. <laughs> we'll do it within 30 minutes. We'll do Uber Lyft. We'll give you absolute, we'll give you the service. And then I talked to staff, and we made, they made it happen. Next thing happened is that in providing this 30-minute service, 30-minute window, we made that a reality. And that happens today in our community. And I recall one day when staff came to me and said, they now want us to transport babies. And I said, what's the issue? And they said, well, babies, well, little babies, you know, and car seats. And I said, we'll buy some car seats. So that was the end of that. And we've been doing that. We transport about 1,000 babies a month in medical appointments. So we're very proud to be here tonight. It's a real honor uh, to be here. And uh, it's all about helping people in this community. It's all about the quality of life. And transportation must be an important element. So thank you. Thank you. I am so proud to work with this man with MTA because when I was doing a morning radio show, Mike and Stephanie on CK 5.5 for 21 years, um, I was able to introduce him. And when he came in, I was interviewing him. My father got a phone call that he had cancer and they had to take him to chemo. And I could not get off the air to take him. I thought, what am I going to do? And Ed said, we can take him for $2.25. They'll pick him up at his house and take him to his chemo appointment. Take him back for $2.25. I wanted to cry. I wanted to hug this man. And I said, if I ever lose my job, I want to work for you. 
Well, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> they did change things. It's all syndicated now. There's no people in the studio any longer. It's all recorded. And I'm grateful and wonderful to work for MTA. And Tracy Davis, like he said, is amazing. She makes sure people get to where they have to go. And are there any veterans in the room at all? Anybody failing veterans? Well, first of all, please give the veterans a big round of applause because they are our heroes. I feel that Veterans Day is not enough. One day a year is not enough to show the veterans that they are heroes, so much we care for them. MTA has worked with partnerships to make sure that veterans get six free rides a month to anywhere health and wellness. So they can get to the doctor, the grocery store, the pharmacy. They'll even take them to the veterans hospital and wait with them and bring them back and stop off the pharmacy, stop off the grocery store and get them home safe and sound. And their spouses get six free rides a month, even their widows. So I want you to know that the program's out there for you. And none of this would happen if it wasn't for this man, Ed Benny. So thank you for this award, and please thank him for making all this happen for our community. So thank you so much. you have plenty. When you combine the largest energy company in the state, who's that? Consumer. With a faith-based institution committed to care, you're in a place now, who's that? Ascension. And with one of the, you know, I think he's one of the best dressed bankers that could financial institution. You know, and got green all the time. What's it that thing called? Huntington. Huntington. You combine those three public private partnerships. Think about it. In Genesee County, everybody talks about the water crisis, but how many of them talk about the public private partnership? Wherever you are, Lindsay Hamilton, I want to say thank you because in 209, you made a believer out of me with those words. Yvonne Lewis talked about an attitude of gratitude. When I look at the navigators, and I look at those who work for Genesee Health Plan, it's not surprising that they have an empower program. Three institutions come together for an empower program. Can anybody name any other city doing that? Oh, you don't know what the empower program is, do you? Shame on you. Shame on you. But guess what? Tonight, going into the Hall of Fame, and Jim's gonna give more information about the empower program, but I'm honored and pleased to have Huntington Bank, Consumers Energy, and Ascension come up here with Tennessee Health Plan to receive the Empowered Program Partnership. And Jim, you give more details, all right? So come on up here. I know Rafael is going to be You know, Omar, about a year from now, we're gonna have another one of these, so please, uh, I think we're gonna book Omar for uh, my job. I can eat and enjoy and let uh, Omar do all this. He's been doing great. But yes, about, oh, probably about four or five years ago, Sue, uh, wasn't it? Uh, Nick Evans, uh, who we honored a few years ago, uh, came to us and said, we've been talking with Consumers Energy and Huntington Bank about this idea, this concept of, uh, of providing assistance to folks that are uh, uh, consumer energy uh, clients, but they recognized that those uh, people had a lot of multiple needs. Uh, healthcare, transportation, as we just talked about, uh, food, clothing, some basic needs. And they said, would G Genesee Health Plan be in on this? And like Ed, I'll say yeah to about anything. <laughs> and then my staff had to uh, implement this, uh, empower, what we call Empower uh, Genesee. And Empower Genesee really is working with all three partners on uh, an access to, to that their, their people that they assist can get our assistance. We have a dedicated Empower Navigator, Sandy, who's here today. You met her at the front desk. So thank you, Sandy. And, uh, she meets with people and, and not only a lot of them need energy assistance, but they need other assistance as well. The initial concept uh, before COVID was to have Sandy stationed uh, at the Consumers Power Payment Center there on Court Street. And if you've ever passed that, ever been in there to pay your bill, uh, there is a tremendous amount of people prior to COVID that would go month to month 
to go pay their, uh, their consumer's bill. 10,000 people each month, usually the same people would go into that site. What a great place to have access to that same population over and over. Because uh, if you've ever done this work before of trying to outreach and you try to call people or whatever, you don't get very far. This group was there. We were able to assist them. We just got started face-to-face -face at the uh, um, payment center in November of 2019 and then uh, had to uh, go virtual um, after that because of COVID. But we still are assisting thousands of people uh, that need it. Uh, consumers make sure that they connect those individuals that uh, are paying either through their drive-through or they have now just opened up their uh, lobby to, to uh, our health navigator. And then we also then refer for financial assistance uh, to Huntington Bank. There's two branches that are uh, kind of on either side of that uh, location. And then Ascension Genesis if they need some medical care. And we've even implemented a uh, where uh, we have a, a kiosk, a virtual platform at two of the Genesis uh, clinics, uh, one downtown and one on the east side, so that their their people that they come and see their clinic for medical need can also connect with the Empower uh, Navigator. So it has just been a mind blowing uh, experience. Like Omar said, connecting folks. Oh, you go right ahead. Yeah, you go right ahead. Now, what y'all think about? The H stands for, that's Huntington, right? Grown, holistic. The A is extension, approach. And what is the P? Power to consumers to meet. It's to have the power. See y'all sleep, y'all miss it. Nobody home, it's on it. I was at, again at the Hall of Fame, ain't it? H-A-P. All right. So I would like to uh, have uh, uh, our partners come up and accept their awards. Uh, I'm representing Ascension Genesis is Joy Finkenbeiner. Uh, she's a vice president. We have from uh, Consumers, uh, Community Affairs Manager, Raphael Turner. And it's good to see you again, Raphael. And then uh, last but not least, Greg Beiner. Uh, he is the uh, president of Michigan region of Huntington. I used to, we were just talking about this, we used to see each other all the time in the community. And this is the first time in like a year and a half, but it, it feels good to have Greg back in the room with us and, and we just enjoy his partnership. So would all three of you please come up and accept your awards for this uh, very unique partnership. Here's yours, Raphael. Greg, I'll give you yours right there. I'll, I'll make this brief. Uh, Ascension Genesis is extremely pleased to accept this award and to partner with Consumers Energy, Huntington Bank, and Genesee Health Plan. This is a collaboration or partnership, obviously, that aligns so well with Ascension's mission and vision, yeah. which is to deliver healthcare services to our community members, particularly those most poor and vulnerable. This program, as Jim described, it delivers those types of services to people in need at the right time, at the right place, and at the right cost. So thank you very much. We're very pleased to participate in this. Thank you. Yes, I'd just like to say a brief thank you on behalf of Consumers Energy, uh, our employees, our executive leadership team. We're so proud to be a part of the Empower program. Uh, our three pillars are uh, people, planet, and Michigan's prosperity. And as well for in order for Michigan to prosper, our economy to prosper, our people have to be taken care of. Uh, so we, we help do that by providing uh, reliable energy, but they also obviously the healthcare needs uh, of Michigan's families and residents. So thank you on behalf of Consumers Energy. Well, good evening, and uh, Jim, thank you. Uh, thanks to the Genesee Health Plan Board of Directors. Um, I want to thank my partners in Ascension and Consumers Energy as well. Um, on behalf of Huntington, we're, we're grateful uh, for the, the recognition, but what's a bank have to do with healthcare, right? Um, it, it really is defined in, in our purpose, and I'm so grateful and uh, get excited and very passionate about our purpose. I get up every day 
and our main purpose is to look out for people and that's what this partnership is all about is to make sure that we're looking out for people trying to help improve their lives help our businesses thrive and make our community stronger um, and thanks again to our partners and we're grateful for the award Thank you. Thank you, Omar. Thank you. Next, we're going to give out the uh, Visionary Leadership Award, and, and this year, uh, this year, and, and it's an award given in gratitude to the people and organizations that provided leadership for creative solutions to accessible, quality, and affordable health care in Genesee County and in our community. And uh, we are going to honor tonight uh, Dr. Donna Fry. So Donna, would you please come up? <laughs> Donna is the Dean of the College of Health Sciences at the University of Michigan Flint. And, uh, uh, and uh, I've known Donna for a, a number of years. And uh, she's always been, uh, you know, when we talk about visionary leadership, it, being involved in very unique programs, not only at the school. So I, I think you created a, during your time uh, occupational therapy uh, program, uh, respiratory therapy program, physician assistant. Just think all those needed careers in our community. Which they are, we're now training them here locally in, in Genesee County, and then healthcare management so that. Uh, they can take over for me, for Linda and others that, uh, you know, the next generation of healthcare leaders in our, in our community. Uh, Donna's been on our board of directors now for a number of years, and, and she, she, she has been so helpful in, in really creating our vision as well and, and helping me execute that uh, with her thoughtfulness. I don't know if I've met someone more thoughtful in her thinking and her, her way of doing things than, uh, I'll call her Donna, but Dr. Fry. Um, <laughs> we uh, worked together. Uh, she wanted to know how uh, she could help out uh, um, when the election of 2018 came aboard. And healthcare was a big issue back then. And so she organized a, uh, a, a forum a, a, where uh, we had speakers come and invited the students uh, of the university to come and be able to have a dialogue about health care and, and what that could mean in, in the last election. And man, she organized that uh, uh, for us. And then going back a long ways, uh, we, uh, we had a partnership with the, the uh, uh, University of Michigan Flint for many years, and they provided actually at one time or another a very another unique program where we developed a primary care and physical therapy program right there at University of Michigan uh, Flint. And they used students to do a, a majority and instructors. And what a great learning environment and and she was so instrumental in helping us get that started and that ran for for many years and when we had uh 25 30 000 people we needed of those resources and that's the great job that they did so um she's just again such a valuable uh part of our community and we just wanted to recognize uh Donna uh, for her leadership in our community for all these years. So Donna, I'm very pleased to give you this uh, Visionary Leadership Award. I'm very humbled to receive this award. And when I look around the room, there are so many visionary leaders in this room that uh, have been part of Genesee Health Plan in the health of our community in general. And it's such a privilege to be able to work with all of you. And I particularly want to recognize our students because when we talk about visionary leaders, you are the visionary leaders of the future. And I really appreciated hearing your essays today. It was wonderful. So I am so pleased that our future in our county will be carried on by leaders like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our last two awards uh, are our Healthcare Hall of Fame uh, uh, Leadership Award inductees. And again, these awards are given to those who have made a lasting impact on the community's healthcare landscape. 
through dedication, advocacy, leadership, and tenacity, that, and that's a good word, tenacity, these folks uh, deserve to be in a healthcare hall of fame that really typifies uh, the, uh, the impact of health on our community. And in your program, I know it's somewhere in here, you can see the folks that uh, we've inducted over the years, and it's a great honor uh, to recognize uh, two people this evening. The first person that I want to recognize is uh, Catherine, or Kathy Bowles, as, as I know Kathy for uh, all these years. Uh, Kathy had a, a or has had a distinguished 30-year career uh, in leadership in our community, mostly with the senior population, improving the lives of the seniors in, in our community. She was the president and CEO of the Valley Area Agency on Aging for 13 years. And before that, I know she worked there. And I, you know, we talk about tenacity in the description of the award. I don't know if there was a fiercer advocate for seniors in our community than Kathy Bowles. Uh, she, uh, she just, uh, just always was watching out for their needs, always looking for additional funding. And you can read in all of our award winners, there's a bio in your program, and I could, I could read that, uh, um, all of it, but she has just had such a distinguished career. And we were fortunate enough for a few years to have Kathy on our board of directors. And uh, again, really provided a lot of leadership uh, to the Genesee Health Plan. And I think it's a little sneaky or suspicious that she retired from our board when she retired from BAAA, and all of a sudden she's over at Dan and Genesee Health Systems on their board. So I was gonna give her a little hard time about that, but I, I'm so glad she's still very active in our community and uh, she is such a great leader. And I know she does things with AARP, she does amazing things that we don't even really know about that uh, she just does. And uh, unfortunately, Kathy was not able to join us uh, uh, this evening. Uh, she had a family emergency at the last minute. I know she would have wanted to be here, but I don't know if Wanda is here. Wanda, would you step up and accept uh, the award on behalf of Kathy? But Kathy is, is such a great leader, and I know we'll be seeing her out in the community in the near future. And just uh, congratulate her when you see her about all the achievements she's had uh, here in, in our community and in our partnership with Genesee Health Plan. So Wanda, please come up. Thank you. I'm, I'm Wanda Harden, and I'm a dear friend of Kathy's. And, has, and as has been indicated, she had a death in the family and uh, she called and asked me to read some, some okay. things. And everybody knows Kathy. Kathy is so compassionate and she is so caring and she's got one great golf game. Oh. <laughs> That's the other thing. I didn't know that. <laughs> but anyway, um, she wanted me to read some things um, to thank you first of all um, for the award and that she was so humbled at receiving the award for something she loved to do. Serving older adults in this community is and continues to be a passion for her. Serving alongside people who are here to celebrate this accomplishment with her makes receiving the award one of the highlights of her professional career. She had the pleasure of serving on the board of directors of Genesee Health Plan. This is a great organization with great people under the direction of John Milanowski, you really do great work and work that is so needed in our community. I'm so sad I'm unable to attend tonight's celebration, but I thank you from the bottom of my heart for this recognition and wish Jim, your entire team, and the board all the best in the future. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. We are just so pleased that, that we had the opportunity to work with Kathy and we appreciate her leadership in our community. So thank you, Wanda. All right, last but not least, we'll get you out of here, I promise. We want to recognize somebody else, and uh, to do that, uh, you know, we, we're celebrating 20 years of our of, uh, of, of the Genesee Health Plan, and it, we would be remiss not to have our, our original president and CEO, Linda Hammerker, to really wish uh, and, and turn to the Hall of Fame our, our next person. So, Linda, would you come up? 
And, uh, you know, as Omar had recognized in, in his remarks, it, it, it was, we wouldn't have Genesee Health Plan in, uh, in this community if it wasn't for the work of, of Linda Hammerker. So let's give her a round of applause. And then we can take a look at the I love this. <laughs> this is my favorite event. I get to look around and see all of the amazing people that have made Genesee Health Plan what it is. And 20 years ago, when we were thinking about maybe we can cover everybody in Genesee County, and if we did, what would that look like? Who would we cover? What would we cover? How would we fund it? All of those questions had to be answered. And uh, it was, many of those questions were answered by the brain trust that's in this room. Our board of directors uh, has been amazing. The community partners that we have worked with all these years have contributed uh, so much to helping the health plan through partnerships uh, to provide services that just were not being provided anywhere else. And over the past 20 years, uh, we've evolved and I just, it makes my heart so happy <laughs> when I see all of the things that we're doing today. So, so yeah, I have a little seniority on Jim at uh, 20 years as, a, as opposed to 15. But I want to talk about the uh, Hall of Fame inductee, uh, Joe Leonard. Joe uh, was one of the original uh, board members of the health plan. And Imagine looking at a community of uninsured and trying to figure out how, you know, we think we want to cover basic stuff, okay? Doctor, lab, prescriptions, and prescriptions was really the big thing. I mean, that's what everybody at that time needed help with. And uh, as a pharmacist, Joe sat down uh, with us and we spent hours and hours and days and meetings and all kinds of uh, research that Joe helped us with to come up with a formulary that the health plan could really afford uh, to use. And we looked at every, he looked at all of the therapeutic classes of medications, figured out which ones were critical, which ones we could afford. And from that, we developed uh, a basic pharmacy formulary. And if it had not done what it did, which is really control our medical costs, Genesee Health Plan never would have got off the ground. We never would have been able to do what we have done. And uh, I remember uh, Joe and I went down to meet with the, with the folks at Medicaid in, in Lansing, and we showed them uh, the formulary and where we had started out on medications and, and what we were currently paying, and they were just blown away. They wanted to use our formulary for Medicaid because it was so um, uh, concise and it really helped the health plan to be able to afford to pay for doctor visits and diagnostics. So uh, another thing that we uh, were able to do, we worked together with the uh, emergency rooms to get uh, the emergency room physicians to write psychiatric medications uh, that could be afforded because so many times uh, psychiatric patients would go to the hospital and get prescriptions that were thousands of dollars and they had no way of getting them filled so we worked with the hospitals and with Joe's help we got we started getting emergency rooms to write prescriptions that we could cover 
And uh, over the years, of course, um, our, our prescription drug benefit has, has evolved, but it was all uh, with the guidance of Joe Leonard as, as uh, pharmacist. He served on the Network and Quality Oversight Committee, which determines benefits and how they're going to be delivered. He served, we actually had a subcommittee, a pharmacy subcommittee. We've ha we have a grants and local funds committee, and we have um, an executive committee, and Joe has served on every single committee that we have had at the health plan. And uh, he's also gone out, we've had drive-through immunization clinics. He's gone out, stood on his feet, immunized, you know, people car after car after car, uh, people coming through uh, walk-ins to get immunized. And uh, he actually came back from retirement to help with COVID immunizations. So uh, he has been one of the people that has made the health plan what it is. And I hope all of you will take a minute to just read his bio. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read it to you, but I, I just want you to read his bio and get a feel for what this man has accomplished. And uh, I asked Joe to come up and accept induction into the Healthcare Hall of Fame. And, and Linda, and I'll just speak for just a second. Linda's right. Uh, Joe was on every committee we've ever had at the health plan. In fact, I thought he worked more. Uh, we should have been, he should have been on our staff. But uh, I miss Joe. I, he retired from our board a few years ago, and I, I just miss his friendship, his camaraderie, but also his leadership, and also his accountability. Uh, he was not afraid to to ask for accountability, and, and I do miss you. And yeah, I couldn't think of a better person to induct into the hall of fame than you, Joe. So thank you. Yep. Thank you, for Linda and Jim. Uh, it's been a, a long journey since 201 when we started. Uh, I, before I get going here, it's not going to be long, I promise. <laughs> but I do want to thank, uh, thank God for the gifts that he gave me. I'd like to thank my wife and my family for the support that they gave me over the years. Uh, I'd like to thank Walgreens. I have two representatives from there tonight. Uh, they have been so instrumental in getting me engaged and keeping me engaged and, and I just appreciate all that Walgreens has done with the Genesee Health Plan in the food clinics and uh, the drive through clinics, we started those, Jim, those turned out to be pretty successful. Yeah, I kind of approached them a few years ago, about five or six years ago, Joe, I'm thinking about using our garages and doing a drive through clinic and he kind of looked at me <laughs> and we were just doing it inside in our classroom. And, he looked at me and he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it turned out, I'm gonna do one last one. Okay, do one last one. <laughs> one last one. All right. uh, again, I wanna thank you. I'm, anybody who knows me, you know I, I like to talk and ramble. Uh, I'm not gonna do that tonight. I'm just gonna say thank you and I uh, appreciate all of you coming here to, to be here tonight and have a good evening. Thank you. This was a usual event, uh, a little bit different for us, but I think what a wonderful night to recognize so many partners and staff and heroes and, and uh, folks that have are doing the work in our community. So thank you for coming. Uh, again, a reminder to award recipients, if you could bring a, your award and get a, a more formal picture, so we have that. And we also have boxes for your award if you would like to have a, a box to take it home with. But, I just want to wish everybody safe travels, a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next year. And hopefully, uh, we'll have a bigger room uh, full of people. And uh, but we made it through it, so thank you very much. <laughs>